my dear friends welcome now our topic is from the ncert textbook biology class 11 chapter 13 photosynthesis in higher plants photo means light synthesis means production so the production of the food will happen through light so because of that they named it as photosynthesis let's see the topic now it is very clear we are going to see the photosynthesis especially in the higher plants the topic of the chapter is very very important we have to understand it in detail all animals including human beings depend on plants for their food have you ever wondered from where the plants will get the food so plants are giving us the food so we have ever wondered that again for the plants where the food is getting green plants in fact have to make or rather synthesize the food they need and all other organisms depend on them for their needs so the green plants make or rather synthesize the food they need through photosynthesis and therefore called autotrophs means they will create their own food you have already learned that the autotrophic nutrition is found only in plants and all other organisms that depend on the green plants for food or heterotrophs means these are hetero means different so these are the different things which will depend on the plants so green plants carry out photosynthesis a physiochemical process by which they use the light energy to drive the synthesis of organic compounds ultimately all living forms on earth depend on sunlight for energy so the use of energy from the sunlight by plants doing photosynthesis is the basis of life on earth photosynthesis is important due to two reasons it is the primary source of all food on earth it is also responsible for the release of oxygen into the atmosphere by green plants so most amount of the oxygen will be available by the release of oxygen from the green plants which is a cyclical process it will take the carbon dioxide and it will give the oxygen during the process of photosynthesis so have you ever thought what would happen if there is no oxygen to breathe this chapter focuses on the structure of photosynthetic machinery nothing but chloroplast and the chlorophyll pigments as well so because of the chloroplast that plastid only the photosynthesis is happening and various reactions that can transform the light energy into chemical energy that to organic chemicals let's see what do we know let us try to find out what we already know about photosynthesis some simple experiments you may have done in the earlier classes have shown that chlorophyll nothing but the green pigment of leaf light and carbon dioxide are required for photosynthesis to occur you may have carried out the experiment to look the star, to look for starch formation in two leaves a variegated leaf variegated leaf means the leaf having patches of chlorophyll it's like a green and yellowish color green and yellowish color so that type of leaf we call it as variegated leaf it will be not all the green part you will have a different patterns in the same leaf or the leaf which were which was partly covered with black paper or you are taking a normal leaf which is having entirely green color and we are covering that leaf partly by a black paper and expose it to light on testing these leaves for the presence of starch it was clear that photosynthesis occurs only in green parts of the leaf in the presence of light so in the above experiment you can take a variegated leaf variegated leaf means so the leaf having a patches of green parts and the remaining will be covered by slight yellowish or any other uh, carotene part so but the photosynthesis will be happen only in the green parts of the leaf or else you can take a normal leaf and you have to cover the half of the leaf with black paper and to observe where the photosynthesis is going to occur so the uncovered part of the leaf there only the photosynthesis is happening 
which means the green color part nothing but the chlorophyll part is responsible for photosynthesis from this experiment we have confined that green color part is essential for photosynthesis so we have some more experiments also in this chapter we are going to see what and all the early experiments confined that light is essential green part of the plant is essential as well as it will take the carbon dioxide and it will release the oxygen so how these whole things are been discovered let's see another experiment it will be quite interesting also please follow me line by line another experiment you may have carried out where a part of the leaf is enclosed in a test tube containing koh soaked cotton which absorbs the carbon dioxide while the other half is exposed to air the setup is then placed in light for some time on testing for the presence of starch so presence of starch is there or not later in the two plants of the leaf you must have found that exposed part of the leaf tested positive for the starch while the portion that was in the test tube so which is soaked in koh that was soaked in the koh uh, test tube tested negative for the starch so this shows that the carbon dioxide was required for photosynthesis can you explain how this conclusion could be drawn so let's see in this chapter so once again the experiment they have taken a plant and they have selected two leaves of the plant one leaf they have put in the test tube with koh solution so the koh solution will absorb the carbon dioxide another leaf was free enough and they tested for starch production the leaf which is exposed directly to the light so the starch production is positive the leaf which is soaked in the koh test tube the starch production is negative from this we came to know so the light is essential for so the carbon dioxide sorry the carbon dioxide is required for photosynthesis let's see the very early experiments it is interesting to learn about these simple experiments that led to a gradual development in our understanding of photosynthesis joseph presley in in 1733 to 1804 so this is his lifetime in 1770 performed a series of experiments that revealed the essential role of air in the growth of green plants presley you may recall discovery oxygen in 1774 so he is the one who discovered the oxygen also so presley observed that a candle burning in a closed space a bell jar soon get extinguished simply a mouse would seen suffocated soon suffocated in a closed space he concluded that a burning candle or an animal that breathes the air but somehow damages the air so it is very simple that the burning candle or the animal will take the oxygen and release the carbon dioxide so inside the closed jar everything was carbon dioxide so it can't inhale the carbon dioxide thoroughly which will which is the toxic and finally the candle is extinguished as well as the mouse is dying but when you place a mint plant in the same bell jar he found that the mouse is staying alive and the candle is continued to burn okay so let's see what does this mean so we have four pictures here in the first picture we have taken a bell jar and we have closed with candle burning candle and mouse in the second picture the candle was extinguished and the mouse was died because this is because the candle takes the oxygen and gives the carbon dioxide as well as the mouse also will takes the oxygen and gives the carbon dioxide so there is no other oxygen here there is no recycling process in this picture so eventually the mouse as well as the candle was off in this below pictures so we have they, he has kept in a mint plant inside this closed jar and he observed so it was all the things was alive because you can see the light so the candle needs thoroughly the oxygen which uh, the oxygen is provided by mint plant and the mouse also requires oxygen which also provided by the mint plant whatever the carbon dioxide which is produced from the candle and the mouse 
is being taken up by this mint plant so likewise it was a recycling all the three are alive whatever the thing which needs oxygen it is taking whatever the thing which needs carbon dioxide it is consuming so finally it is recycling because of that all the three are alive in the jar presley hypothesis as follows plants restore to the air whatever breathing animals and burning candles will remove it so plants will restore the oxygen and that the oxygen is removed by this burning candle and mouse finally that is the thing i think it is very easy also can you imagine how how presley would have concluded the experiment using a candle and a plant remember he would need to rekindle the candle to test whether it burns after a few days how many different ways can you think of to light the candle without disturbing the setup okay so using a similar setup as one used one used by the presley but placing it once in the dark and once in the sunlight jan in the house so its lifetime during 1730 to 1799 showed that sunlight is essential to the plant process that somewhat purifies the air fouled by burning candles or breathing animals Indus is an elegant experiment indigenous is an elegant experiment with an aquatic plant showed that in bright sunlight small bubbles were formed around the green plant while in the dark they did not later he identified these bubbles to be of oxygen bubbles so then he can find that plant emits the oxygen hence he showed that it is only the green part of the plant that could release oxygen because the green part of the plant only will take part under photosynthesis so photosynthesis will release the oxygen finally it is emitted in the form of bubbles in the water plant so that is in this experiment it was not until about 1850 the julius van sachs provided evidence for the production of glucose when plant grew glucose is usually stored as starch his later studies showed that the green substance in the plant chlorophyll as we know it now is located in special bodies which we later we call it as chloroplast so inside the chloroplast we have the chlorophyll so the whole chloroplast is located inside the cell so for example mostly in the mesophyll cells of the green leaf within the plant cell he found that the green parts in plant is where glucose is made and that the glucose is usually stored as starch now consider the interesting experiments done by t w engelman in the year 1843 to 1909 using a prism he split the light into a spectral components we all know light is nothing but a union of spectrum we have with gr so he divided that spectrum by using this prism and then illuminated a green algae so he have taken a green, a green algae sample and he has separated the light from by using a prism so the green algae name is cladophora placed in a suspension of aerobic bacteria so the aerobic bacteria means which will release the oxygen so the bacteria were used to detect the sites of oxygen evolution he observed that bacteria accumulated mainly in the regions of blue and green light of the split spectrum at first spectrum at first action spectrum of the photosynthesis was thus described it resembles the roughly the absorption of spectra of chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b we have many types of chlorophyll a b c so we have d e by the middle of the 19th century the key features of plant photosynthesis were known namely the plants could use the light energy to make carbohydrates from carbon dioxide and water the empirical equation is representing the total process of photosynthesis for oxygen evolving organisms as understood so it is the union of so the carbohydrates are produced from the union of carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of light into carbohydrates plus oxygen 
so this is the empirical formula that how the carbohydrates are synthesized and again we'll discuss about this experiment so he has taken illuminating a green algae cladophora into a sample suspension suspension means he has taken a slide on that he suspended the green algae cladophora as well as he has taken the aerobic bacteria cladophora will release the oxygen and aerobic bacteria needs the oxygen so aerobic bacteria is more accumulated at the spectrum of red and blue then he confined at that regions only the photosynthesis is going to happen more in the whole with gr let's see where the carbon dioxide carbohydrate represented uh, sorry ch2o ch2o represented a carbohydrate for example glucose a six carbon sugar a milestone contribution to the understanding of photosynthesis was that made by microbiologist cornelius van neel who based on his studies of purple and green bacteria demonstrated that photosynthesis is essentially a light dependent reaction means light is very need very much needed in which the hydrogen for a suitable oxidizable compound reduces the carbon dioxide to carbohydrates so in the presence of light only the water which is not h2o will split into protons so these protons will be added to carbon dioxide to become co2h so with ch2o which is a carbohydrates so this was expressed by 2a2 2h2a means here for example 2h2a means 2h2o plus carbon dioxide in the presence of light 2a means oxygen plus ch2o means carbohydrates plus water so at the end of the photosynthesis the oxygen is released carbon dioxide is produced and water is also released from the plants in green plants hydro water is hydrogen donor and is oxidized to oxygen some organisms do not release oxygen during photosynthesis where when h2s instead is the hydrogen donor for purple and green sulfur bacteria so here the hydrogen donor is h2s the oxidation product is sulfur or sulfate depending on the organism and not oxygen hence he inferred that the oxygen evolved by the green plant comes from h2o not from carbon dioxide this was later proved by using radio isotopic techniques the correct equation that would represent the overall process of photosynthesis is therefore 6 carbon dioxide plus 12 h2o in the presence of light gives rise to c6h12o6 which is glucose plus 6 h2o plus 6o2 where c6h12o6 represents sugar glucose the o2 released is from water and this is proved by using a radio isotope technique so there is a very important question how this overall empirical formula was finally the correct equation was stated from radio isotope techniques note that this is not a single reaction but description of a multi step process which we call photosynthesis so can you explain why 12 molecules of water as substrate are used in the equation given above okay so why they have used 12 let's see so at the end of this chapter you will come to know why they used 12 where does the photosynthesis will takes place you would of course answer in the green leaf or in the chloroplast based on what you earlier read in chapter 8 you are definitely right photosynthesis does takes place in the green leaves of the plant but it does so in other green parts of the plants can you name some other parts where you think photosynthesis may occur you would recollect that previous unit that the mesophyll cells in the leaves have a large number of chloroplast usually the chloroplast align themselves along the walls of mesophyll cells such that they get the optimum quantity of incident light 
when do you think the chloroplast will be aligned with their flat surfaces parallel to the walls when would they will be perpendicular to the incident light this we are going to study so you have studied the structure of chloroplast in chapter 8 in cell biology within the chloroplast there is a membranous system consisting of grana so grana means it looks like a coin stack stack of a coins we call it as grana and single coin we call it as thylakoids so the stroma lamella and the matrix stoma stroma there is a clear division of labor within the chloroplast means what are the work should be done by what organelles the membrane system is responsible for trapping the light energy and also for the synthesis of atp and nadph in stroma the enzymatic reaction synthesis sugar which turns from starch the former set of reactions since they are directly light driven because of that we call it as light reactions or photochemical reactions the later are not directly light driven but are dependent on the products of light reactions nothing but it needed atp and nadph initially totally we have two reactions one is light dependent reactions another one is light independent reactions so like for the light in the light dependent reactions atp and nadph are produced and these atp and nadph are used by dark reaction so without light reaction the dark reaction will not be happen so but for the light reaction the light is the essential one however this should be so the dark reaction we call it as carbon reactions however this should not be constructed to mean that they occur in darkness or that they are not light dependent because always the dark reaction will happens after the light reaction because without atp and nadph there is no dark reaction that is not like it happens in the dark the light is not dependent because of that they called it as dark reaction here is the whole diagrammatic representation of an electron micrograph of a section of the chloroplast so let's see the chloroplast so chloroplast is also a semi autonomous cell organelle which has its own dna and own ribosomes which can divide by its own without depending on the nuclear dna so it is also a double membrane bounded cell organelle we have the outer membrane inner membrane two membranes are there and inside the hole we call it as stroma this green color space we call it as stroma and you can see this grana so the stack like coin like whole things we call it as grana together and stroma and we have the ribosomes so the chloroplast will have its own ribosomes and it uh, and we have the starch granules here so this orange color part is starch granules and we have the lipid droplets also inside and we have the stroma lamella stroma lamella means that is a flat disk like structure which is connecting from one grana to the other grana stroma lamella we call it as and the individual stack we call it as individual coin like the thing in the grana we call it as thylakoid so inside that only the light reaction is going to happen so let's see how many types of pigments are involved in photosynthesis so in this graph we have seen three pigments chlorophyll a chlorophyll b and carotenoids looking at plant have you ever wondered why and how there are so many shades of green in their leaves even in the same plant we can look for an answer to this question by trying to separate the leaf pigments of any green plant through proper paper chromatography paper chromatography means uh, they will take the plant they will take the leaf and they will grind it in trichloroacetic acid and finally you will get a slurry liquid and they will dip the paper chromatography the paper into the test tube then you can observe the paper will absorb that slurry liquid and that will see you can see the different colors in the absorbed paper through that we can identify what are the pigments are present in the leaf 
a chromatographic separation of the leaf pigments shows that the color that we see in the leaves is not due to a single pigment but due to four pigments chlorophyll a which is bright or blue green in the chromatogram chlorophyll b yellow green and xanthophylls yellow carotenoids yellow to yellow orange let us now see what roles various pigments plays in the photosynthesis pigments are the substances that have the ability to absorb light at specific wavelength can you guess what is the most abundant plant pigment in the world let us study the graph showing the ability of chlorophyll a pigment to absorb light of different wavelength of course you can familiar with the wavelength of the visible spectrum of light as well as with gr from the figure from this figure so here we have chlorophyll a carotenoids and chlorophyll b we can see what at which wavelength there is the highest absorption of light so you can determine the wavelength color of light at which the chlorophyll shows a maximum absorption does show any other absorption peak at another wavelength too if yes which one now let's look in the figure 133.3b showing the wavelength in which maximum photosynthesis will occur so this is the picture graph showing at which wavelength the maximum amount of photosynthesis will occur can you see that the wavelength at which the maximum photosynthesis will occur by chlorophyll a that is in the blue and red regions these are the two regions where the maximum amount of float photosynthesis will occur and also shows higher rate of photosynthesis hence we can conclude that chlorophyll a is the chief pigment associated with photosynthesis previously we have seen totally we have four pigments chlorophyll a chlorophyll b chlorophyll a is dark green in color or blue green in color chlorophyll b is light green in color and xanthophylls is yellow and carotenoids is yellow to yellow orange so hence we can conclude that chlorophyll a is the chief pigment associated with photosynthesis but by looking at the figure can you say that there is a complete one to one overlap between the absorption spectrum of chlorophyll a and the action spectrum of photosynthesis yeah so the rate of absorption the rate of photosynthesis as well as the absorption you can see a same type of overlap so first is about the maximum wavelength of absorption that is blue and red you can see the red and blue here here we have at which wavelength we have the maximum amount of photosynthesis that is the same it is been overlapping those two graphs are overlapping this is the chlorophyll a graph and this is the rate of photosynthesis so both are almost same so this is all about the experiments of what are essential things for photosynthesis one is light other one is carbon dioxide other one is water and finally it emits sugar in the presence of light sugar oxygen and water so how are these are essential is been step by step by step one after the one the experiments is going to reveal so what are why it is essential and what are the essential things for photosynthesis we have talked about the apparatus photosynthetic apparatus nothing but chlorophyll and also the chlorophyll pigments we have the four important chlorophyll pigments so this is all about the introduction and also the experiments as well as the apparatus of photosynthesis okay my dear friends thank you very very much for watching please do like share comment and subscribe to my channel for more biology videos thank you very much